When you type in world's best point breaks, on almost every single article, you're gonna find Anchor Point Morocco. Famed for being a freight training right-hander with rippable walls and infinite barrel sections, Anchor Point is every regular footer's dream. And for me, that's certainly no understatement. This week, I'm on a mission to try and experience not only this legendary wave, but also everything that this country has on offer. From its bustling and wild cities, to its natural beauty and infamous point breaks, this is the story on my journey in to Morocco. Our story begins the morning after a long night of travel, where I awake in a country I've never been and get my first look at what lied out the back door for the next 10 days. Hey guys, I'm on my iPhone right now. I'm never on my iPhone. I'm losing my mind. I just woke up, first day in Morocco, walked out my door. Look at the house we're staying at. As somebody who loves to travel, Africa, and more specifically Morocco, is a place that has been on my bucket list for quite a while, especially with my newfound passion for surfing. And with this being my literal first sight, I thought that I had died and gone to heaven. Oh, look at this one! Charlie, get over here! Oh my god! Guys, welcome to Morocco! To top it all off, we were offered donuts and coffee by a street vendor within the first few minutes. I thought I was dreaming, man. It was probably the most perfect kickoff that I've ever had to a trip, and the energy throughout the whole crew was just at an all-time high. It's just amazing. It's like front row service. We just walk out, check the waves. You guys are like, coffee, donuts? You're like, yeah. After watching the waves for a bit, we decided to get suited up and go for our first session of the trip. And not gonna lie, it was pretty damn special walking out the back door oh, yeah. and jumping straight off the rocks into the sea below. And it reminded me of my time back in Hawaii, where nothing mattered but the surf session that lied ahead. After clocking a couple hours in and at the wave, we honestly didn't get too many good rides. I mean, don't get me wrong, the wave was insane, but it was also insanely crowded and honestly pretty sectiony. And then eventually it kind of just stopped working altogether. But that's serving for you. And that's also why I think we're all addicted to it. One moment it's on, and the next, it's not. Day two rolls around, and we've got some time to kill before the surf shows up again. So the crew and I decide to head into the nearby town known as Tagazoot. <laughs> Tagazoot ended up being this rad little surf town in the perfect home base for us. There was sweet little gift shops, super good restaurants, and the Moroccan people here were just incredibly nice and fun to be around. Oh, and it was pretty rad when this guy showed up to play us a song. As cool as Tagazoot was, we wanted to see Morocco for what it really was. If there's one thing I've learned while traveling, it's that I think an important aspect is to get out and really explore the country you're in. Even if that means missing a couple days of surf or getting out of your comfort zone a bit. Go a 
We ended up deciding to drive four hours inland to a city known as Marrakesh. As we drove through the Moroccan desert, I kept getting flashbacks to our Baja road trip, and I had this realization that Morocco is to Europe as Baja is to the US. Of course, there's plenty of differences, but in terms of the landscape and the vibe with the waves and everything, it certainly had its similarities. We passed by sand houses and old castles and caves, and perhaps the most interesting part of the drive was as we approached Marrakesh. There were snow-capped mountains in the distance. I couldn't believe it. Coming from a warm tropical desert where we were in t-shirts and drift lines to all of a sudden snow-capped mountains. Eventually, we pulled into the city at sunset and got a hostel for the night where we enjoyed some Moroccan tea and got a nice rest before a big day of exploring the city. Marrakesh was like no place I had ever been in my life. A maze of a city that felt like I was lost within the Disney movie Aladdin. We were walking through the bustling streets past every type of vendor that you could possibly imagine, discovering ringsmiths, tea dealers, and rug makers. There was just the most interesting stuff around every single corner. Hey guys, this is wild. A bucket full of snails. You guys, this is officially one of the craziest places I've ever been, without a doubt, in my mind. It's fucking wild. I've never seen anything like it. Oh my god, that store is really cool. Holy See, shit. we're doing this every few seconds. The most fascinating part of the city, though, was when we arrived in the center square. It was like a huge open plaza dotted with food vendors, shoe shiners, and even snake charmers. I'll never forget Max holding the King Cobra for the sicko's bit. That was probably super dumb of us, but as is everything that's badass. We ended up roaming the streets until dark, grabbing some dinner, and then driving back to our Airbnb that night. Because we heard surf was up. Sure enough, we awoke that morning to pumping surf out the back door. But after talking it out, we decided we didn't want to battle the crowd again and that you can't have a proper surf trip to Morocco without living the search at least a little bit. We loaded our boards onto the car and just started driving. And the African coastline is so set up for waves, it was pretty unbelievable how many flawless right-handers we drove past with absolutely nobody surfing. You're there, you're there. Eventually, we just decided to pull over at a spot that looked promising. We were up on this bluff looking down at what looked to be a perfect point break. It was oil glass and had power and these perfect turn sections that ran along the rocky coast. But the only question was how do we get out to it? We ended up scrambling down the bluff into a rocky bay that the waves were slowly filling into. Somehow, we had to navigate a pretty sketchy paddle out and not get crushed along the way. Because just outside the bay, was some pretty stout shore break on a massive rocks and sets that never seemed to stop coming. It was a game of patience, and one that ended up taking about an hour of our time and almost taking Will for a ride into the boneyard. But eventually, we did make it, and uh, I think it was worth it. Now, although that session felt really short, I can tell you that it sure was sweet. And I think I can say that about my entire trip to Morocco. I mean, I was here for 10 days, but it felt like four. I don't know how or why, but time was flying. 
and when I recount the memories on the trip, I can tell you that it was one of the most magical places I've ever been. From the people I met, to the waves I've surfed, to the memories that I made, I think my simple and selfish sign off to this video is that Morocco, I'm already counting down the days until we meet again. Oh,